Um, now, if you think secret back channel diplomatic negotiation doesn't sound like gripping theater, then you haven't seen Oslo, a riveting account of the tense behind the scenes dialogue leading up to the Oslo peace accords between Israel and the Palestine Liberation Organization. The play focused on a Norwegian couple, Terje Rode Larsen and Mona Jewell, who brought the Palestinians and Israelis together in Oslo and thus launched the only peace deal that's ever been struck between the two sides. Here's a little scene. After all, who am I but you, my darling? You are Mona Jewell, jewel of the Norwegian Foreign Service, who possesses the most beautiful, powerful, Rolodex. <laughs> Let us try, my love. Together. Tell me you would have said no. <laughs> now, J.T. Rogers wrote this extraordinary new play, and he joins me in New York together with the real-life diplomat Mona Jewell. Jewell of the Norwegian Foreign Service, as you just heard. She's now Norway's ambassador to Britain. Welcome to the program. Can I first go to you, Mona? Uh, how did you and your husband just decide to do that? What on earth made you take that chance? And did you think it would succeed? Oh, that's it's a very long story, Christiane. Uh, uh, but it, uh, it, it, it was sort of a coincidence of so many things. But most importantly of all, I think, was that also in, in Norway and in the Norwegian government and in the foreign industry, there was a strong wish uh, among us all that uh, we should really try to be helpful in, in a conflict that had been going on for so long. So we decided to, to give it a try, and I am afraid at least that, um, or in, in many stages along the way, we certainly did it, didn't believe we would succeed. And let me just move to you, J.T. Rogers, who wrote this, and you've done political theatre, obviously, before. What made you think this would be riveting drama, which other people might think, you know, is watching paint dry, back channels, secret negotiations? How did you know that this would be something for the stage? Well, I think partially from how you just described it, back channels, secret negotiations, and already my ears are pricking as a, as a writer. This story, in terms of the ruthless narrative of storytelling has a ticking clock it has people's lives in dangers it has people risking their beliefs and the, their own lives for an idea bigger than themselves which is exactly the sort of things that i'm interested to, in writing about and mona these were two sides which were not even allowed to meet. Uh, the play makes it absolutely clear, for those of us who may have forgotten, that officially the two sides were not allowed to meet. How did you explain, we know from the play, but how did you get around that, getting them together? Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I think that is that is sort of the, uh, the, the the crux of the whole thing is that you have to put what happened into perspective, uh, given that it was uh, two sides, the Israelis and the Palestinians, that that weren't at the time sort of uh, forbidden to, uh, to, 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 or they couldn't see each other. And on the Israeli side, well, by law, forbidden to meet PLO officials. And we ha have to also to remember at the time the PLO was considered a, a terrorist organization that sort of not only uh, I think many countries among them uh, the, the US was sort of shying away from having any kind of contacts with what we did then was that we promised them and did our best to tell them that they could come to Norway, we will provide the secrecy, we, we will provide a kind of an atmosphere that will take them out of the heat in the Middle East and to ha have them relax and try to sit together in one room and trying not to talk about what has happened, but what they could possibly find out could happen for the future and for, for, for their children. And I think that is 
very much sort of the, uh, the the success story was that we managed to keep it secretly and 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 both sides had the kind of a deniability because it was if it became known that Israelis and Palestinians were going to Norway we had the sort of the cover story that uh, they have attended sort of an academic seminar that uh, had really nothing to do with sort of the, the real uh, conflict and, and let's not forget that the United States was leading, playing the leading role in trying to forge a peace, and all of this was done without the knowledge of the United States. That in itself was a high-stakes gamble. I want to play a, just a little uh, clip. Here we're going to see Yossi Balin, the highest-level Israeli who was involved in this, and then we'll talk to you on the other side of it. In Europe, they are calling us Nazis. In Europe, where it has only been 50 years. Every day, more and more, the world turns against us, but all we do is sit at that negotiating table. Where you will achieve nothing because your negotiating model is fundamentally flawed. Exactly, so that's what I keep saying. You are trapped in a procedure saying. that is rigid, impersonal, yes, and... Yes, yes, I agree completely, trust. but this is what the Americans want us to it do. Is, and so you must do it, but also establish a second channel, you know, built on the exact opposite model, not grand pronouncements between governments, but intimate discussions between people. So that is Terry Road Larson, Mona's husband, trying to convince the Israeli side to do this. JT, um, you decided to focus on a process rather than the real celebrities of it, who were the Israeli Prime Minister and Yitzhak Rabin. It's not a big men of history, it's the big moment of history. How did you come to that and, and how did you decide to choreograph it so that it's accessible? Well, I think that in storytelling, in a way that's gripping and in entertaining and frankly fun for an audience, it's often the people right beneath the highest level of powers that are risking their own lives more and, and uh, will let more of their heart and their emotions show in their sleeves. So those are the people you're attracted to and who as an audience member want to watch. In terms of the choreography or the structure of the play, when I discovered that this back channel existed, and I have to say I didn't know nothing about it when I first learned about it a few years ago, much to my amazement and slight embarrassment, um, I realized that by focusing, if the entry point for our story was the Norwegians, it allowed me, in a sense, to slide into the subject of Israel-Palestine without making something didactic and lecturing, but instead have a play that in essence puts three sides on the table, the, the most important being the point of view of the Palestinians and the Israelis, where I could create a story where everyone, everyone regardless of their politics, got a chance to speak and speak with eloquence and with humor and passion and the audience of course is then left to decide what they think because as a writer for the theater my job is to ask questions, not to tell you what to think. Yes, and of course I need to ask Mona the last question about the promise that may or may not, in your opinion, I don't know, have been fulfilled. Because this was a success, but there is still no peace between the Israelis and the Palestinians. Just how do you feel about the promise of these kinds of negotiations and where it leads or doesn't lead in the end? Hmm. Now, I think that the, the main message that this, uh, that this uh, play brings is that there is hope. Because also at that time, and still, we are in a terrible conflict situation also among the Israelis and, and the Palestinians, not to say uh, in the Middle East uh, uh, overall. But the message that this um, uh, play brings is that it is possible to bring people together and the minute you do that and you start to talk to each other, I think you, you will realize yeah. that we have a lot more in common and and and, and the sort of the picture of the enemy starts to sort of to unravel because you see yeah. there are human beings on both sides and and, and 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 a lot that one can fight for together rather than to always insist on a history full of conflict right. full of pain full of death full, full of violence so i think it is a very very timely play and it is it carries a very strong message I think you're absolutely right, and it's amazing to be reminded of it. Mona Jewell and writer J.T. Rogers, thank you so much. And, of course, the play formally opens tonight after having been in previews for the last several weeks. Thank you both so much.